new, 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 new. Okay, Lady Ada, we got new products. Yeah, we have a bunch of new products. What do you want to show? Let's start off with this. It is a TO92, but it's not just any TO92. It's the, uh, can you go back one? Yeah. Next one. Next. This one? Yeah. You like this one? Okay. Well, it has the part number on it because I can never remember. It's the KA7530. What it, is it? I'm glad you asked because I'm ready to tell you. It is a uh, power reset controller. It's a little chip that lets you make sure that your microcontroller or project or microcomputer doesn't turn on until the voltage on the power input is high enough. Is it like transistor person? It's kind of like a transistor person, but it's more like op-amp op lady with um, a band get voltage reference and a, a divider. I know her. Yeah. So what happens is on the first pin, that's like the input pin, you put, connect that to your power supply, so like battery pack or whatever. And then the second pin connects to ground, and then the third pin is the output. And if the first pin is under 3.3 volts, then the third pin will be uh, connected to ground. And so that basically makes sure that... Um, if you have a project with an enable pin and uh, you know, it doesn't run well under 3.3 volts, it will keep it It'll keep the chip reset until that voltage gets above 3.3. This comes up sometimes, like, well, what happened is a couple people in the forums were having an issue, and I was like, oh, this is an easy fix for it. If you have, um, like, a Feather Hazal or, like, a Wi-Fi chip, and it's powered off a battery, and it runs the battery all the way down, when you try to recharge it, you'll charge up the battery just enough to turn on the chip, which will then uh, connect to Wi-Fi and start doing all this stuff, which will then uh, drain the LiPo battery before it starts getting charged. So it never quite gets charged enough. It kind of ends up discharging it before it gets enough charge to get out of the trickle charge state. So this is really good if you have something that can run a battery down and um, yeah. uses a lot of power. It might, it might end up discharging the battery again before it gets up to a reasonable level. So this gives it some breathing room. Okay. It can be used for a lot of other things. Uh, also, you know, helps maintain stability. If you have electronics that, um, you know, the, the voltage levels or the analog readings would be incorrect if the voltage was under 3.3 volts, this will also help you because it's, it's a nice little yeah. reference. I have googly eyes, but uh, I didn't put them on these. Okay. Thanks. Next up. Uh, so, you have a arcade pack, Lady Ada. Yeah, we do. We you have, like arcades. We have um, the arcade bonnet. And so this is, we have a couple projects and guides about how to connect, um, you know, buttons and joysticks directly to a Raspberry Pi, and you can do that. But we also have a couple projects where you might want to have, like, a Pi Zero, which doesn't have audio output, or you might want to use analog joysticks, which I'll, I'll show in the overhead. These are okay. joysticks that are not switch type. I'll uh, give it the overhead. So, yeah, sorry, this is over here. So, for example, if you want to use a joystick that's analog style, has potentiometers, you need to have special circuitry that takes that analog voltage and converts it to a digital voltage with um, some hysteresis so that you don't get, like, weird jittery effects. And um, so we designed this uh, bonnet, which I will show here. And you don't have to use it on a Pi Zero. It works great on a Pi 3 or a Pi 2 or whatever. It's just really compact. And I have it here connected up to like everything, which is why there's a lot of wires. Everything. But there's six arcade button connections, and these are like quick connects, so they're they're very nice. You just snap them right onto your buttons. Um, so you plug in these quick connect cables, and you get six buttons, which we found is a really good number. We also have a connection for a joystick. So these five wires go to the joystick connection, um, which is a normal switchy type joystick, um, which is like this. Uh, which is like this, this clicky type joystick. And then um, we also have uh, the analog joystick part, as I mentioned. So this is the analog joystick, uh, and you can connect this up to um, a joystick like this, and it will pop, you know, do the proper conversion to digital switches for you because it has to like do two comparators. So that's that circuitry here. And then over here we have a three watt um, speaker output. So you can connect up to a three watt speaker and it will do the audio output really nice digital clean sound so you know on even something like a um a pi 3 the audio output can be kind of scratchy um and if you want to drive uh, you know if you don't want to have to like get a separate audio amplifier um this is a nice i2s digital all-in-one you know speaker decoder amplifier which can give you really good quality audio sound um, and all of the digital inputs here go through a GPIO converter. This little chip here is an I squared C GPIO converter. And the reason we did that is we wanted to have 14 of these inputs. You have six 
buttons, four joystick pads here and four joystick pads over there. Um, though we didn't want to use all of the GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. We actually leave almost all the pins available. And that this means that this can be used with stuff like a Pi TFT, or if you have um, some other kind of hat that's using a lot of the connections, you, you're not using all those connections up. And um, if you really want, you can also stack two of these together so you can have like you know two controllers worth um, by setting the address pin. So it's kind of like, we wanted to make something that was good for very compact builds and also allowed you to use a Pi TFT at the same okay. time. So I thought I had, I just show a little demo. Yeah. What's neat is um, we, we have a little uh, Python script that converts all of these switches into uh, key presses. So... Just, you can hold up the, the display underneath there, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just, it's just a little complicated. I ran out of HDMI inputs. I know. No, that's fine. So I've got, you know, I've got this uh, controller here. Let me turn this on. Hopefully I didn't reset it. Uh-oh. I might have reset it Beep, bleep. by accident. Oh, yeah. I have to okay, well, this. we'll come back to that. Whoops. I unplugged it. We'll come back to it um, as it boots up, okay? Yeah, one second. Yeah, let All me, uh, we'll go back. Yeah, totally. I, uh, kind totally, of, totally, totally. I kind of unplugged the All right. USB back. So. Well. Okay, so this is going. Next up. What else Next up is the um, the Pi hat to the right. This one? No. This keep one. Keep going. Keep going. This one? Yeah, that. Okay. Okay, so next up is um, this e-ink hat. While my Pi is booting, we got retro Pi is happening. So this is a nice um, add-on. It's like in the big sister to the Pi Zero version of this e-ink hat. It's called the Papyrus, and it's got um, a nice like it's like 300 by 120 pixel e-ink display. And what's really nice is like I'm holding it up, and like you see, there's no power, so it keeps the display on the e-ink working. You even when it's unplugged. That's one of the things about e-ink that's really nice is it, it's daylight readable and uh, it doesn't use any power. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And um, this works with any Raspberry Pi. It works best with the Pi 2 and Pi 3 and B Plus because it's kind of big. We have a Pi Zero sized one as well. And um, this one even has like a, a real-time clock and it has all these buttons and add-ons. Um, it's really easy to use, comes with yeah. the library and you can display uh, black and white graphics and text. So you can see the bottom here, there's all sorts of uh, there's a real-time clock battery and there's optional buttons you can solder in and little plug-ins and it even has like a little um, Poco pin that connects to the reset so it looks like it can control the power on the Raspberry Pi as well or maybe reset that when necessary. Yeah, make your own tiny Kindle. Okay. A little, t yeah. A little Next up. Okay, so this is back to, you want to see, go back to the demo? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, go back to the overhead. Okay. So. Oh, look at us, we're playing video games. Yay, so we got this. So you know what you could do? You could help me by holding this. Yeah, this is my job. Oh, man, this is very hard to... Okay, so... We did a plan video games. Beep, 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 beep. She's not doing engineering right now. She's playing video no, games. No, but I have to... I got it. You got it? Yeah, I'm tilting it so people can see what's on the screen. Okay, so let me play. What do you want to play? I got this. I wanted to... Nintendo Presents. Okay, now you got it. You yeah. want it? No, I'm just. This like, is what it's like at home. She never lets me play video games. I. It's difficult. Hold on. This has a clampy thing. I'm um, just saying. I think I could bring a lot to the okay. video games. Okay, you you try holding it now. I was just trying to make it so it wasn't reflecting the light as much. Okay. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm a helper. Wait, hold on. Watch out. Okay. Watch out. No, I had to figure out which one's the button. Okay, so you can uh, play all sorts of joyful games. Ooh, watch out for the bomb. You can uh, get hit by a bullet. Someone sent you up the bomb. Okay. Uh, all sorts of it. fun things. So, it, you know, basically you run RetroPie and it works um, with RetroPie just fine. Um, Pi 3 will get you the best emulation, but you can do like Nintendo, you know, original Nintendo and, and MAME quality emulation yeah. on a Pi Zero. MAME's open source now. Okay. Pi 3 will get you like uh, the better quality stuff like okay, a, you and know, then you Nintendo to 64. This. And this is the bonnet itself. So um, this is what you, it comes with and you have the six connectors. It comes with a little kit. Uh, you can solder it together and plug it onto your Pi and then just run our installer script which will add the audio output and the little uh, key button yeah. press to keyboard press input. Okay. And then tonight, the star of this show 
yeah. besides you is this. It's so small and cute, but it's the star. This is a um, I2S microphone. It's the SPH0645, which is just the model. Like it, it's a good uh, wide range I2S microphone. This is a digital only microphone. So there's some, you know, if you're using a, a simple microcontroller, you can usually just use an analog input and, uh, you know, get the um, microphone into the analog input and then just read it with an analog read or something. But if you have a more advanced microcontroller or if you have a microcomputer like the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have analog inputs. Instead, you're expected to get your microphone input using I2S, which is a audio standard. And uh, this is, one of those microphones that you can use with, uh, say, the Raspberry Pi or mm -hmm. um, the SAMD. So uh, it is a bottom port. So you see that silver thing in the middle that's a microphone. On the opposite side, you have the port, and that's where the audio comes out. So you're, you're kind of expected to use this upside down, as it were. It's also 3.3 volts only. Um, you can use it with 1.8 volt logic, but almost everybody's going to use it with 3.3. So uh, use it with 3.3 or, or what have you. Yeah. And... Uh, Personally, I think it's mostly for the Raspberry Pi. You can use it with the SAMD processors, but they also have analog inputs, and it's usually easier just to do analog um, than I2S uh, because I, it's a little bit like more complicated. You have to set up DMA, and you have to like buffer all the data at once. Okay. But I do have a very simple demo of it running with a um, Feather M0. So this is a SAMD uh, chip, and the SAMD processors have an I2S interface and there's even an i2s library so let's see so this is um just a simple demo you know when i, I tap it basically it gets louder testing testing so that's you know just that's simple cool. audio vu meter and I, I have an example code for this in um the library but it's digital only okay. right? no i no analog um this microphone is mono you only get one channel because it's only one microphone element, yeah. but you can wire up two of them. Not on the um, Arduino library, it doesn't only supports mono, but on like the Raspberry Pi, you can use two and then you get left and right, so you get stereo. Yeah. You just get two of them and you wire them up together and actually I2S is kind of smart. It will be like, oh yeah, you have two microphones, like sweet. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, congratulations, you've completed the new products. You did it. Yay. Okay, everyone.